Okay. So I would like to start considering that we have a lot of things uh, to discuss. And I hope that you all can see my screen if someone can confirm to me. Yep. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So welcome everyone. My name is Isabella Spindola and I am the focal point for young water professionals within IWA. And I'm also responsible for this amazing fellowship that we have in partnership with Grand Falls. So I will be your host today, also the moderator. And before we started, I just want to highlight some of the house rules that we have. So during this um, get together, please be polite, be respectful, be present in the discussions that we're gonna have. Feel free to engage, type in the chat, share your comments. And during the Q&A, don't hesitate to open your mic um, first, raise your hands and then open your, your mic so we can um, understand what, are your inquiries about it. So ask for clarification all the time that you need and also no discrimination uh, in this uh, online event. This is a safe space and is a space that we created for young water professionals. And as you might have seen, this event is gonna be, it's being recorded and it's gonna be made available online on IWA Connect Plus. Again, uh, you don't need to open your mic while I'm doing the presentation, but during the Q&A, uh, please feel free to open. And if you're comfortable with, you can have your camera on during the whole uh, time that we have here in the presentation. Okay, so without further delay on this, um, I understand that all of you are keen to get to know a little bit more about this fellowship that we have with Grandfels. So this program that we created for Young Water Professional was established in 2022. And now we are currently with uh, our call for applications open for the second cohort. So the 2025 and 2026 fellowship will engage 14 IWA Young Water Professionals. And it's very important that you understand that we have a topic for this fellowship. So during this fellowship, all the projects that the selected participants will be working on should be related and centered around local led solutions to promote resilience and adaptation in the water sector. In terms of a timeline, this fellowship is scheduled to commence in February 2025, so next year, and will conclude in September 2026 during the IWA World Water Congress and exhibition that is going to be held in Glasgow in Scotland. And as part of this fellowship, all the selected participants, all the 14 young water professionals will attend mandatory monthly meetings, plus a series of online and in-person events. The online um, uh, events, we are expecting between five, four to five sessions. This number can be um, changed depending on the necessity that we identify during the program on this. And the in-person events are already uh, highlighted in the call for applications. Um, in terms of eligibility, this is a program for young water professionals. In IWA, we consider young water professionals all of our members that are aged until 35 years old. So this means that if you are 36, 37, 40, 50, you cannot apply for this fellowship. And if you are below 18 years old, you also cannot apply. And yes, you need to be an IWA membership and we will verify your membership status uh, in our system. So if you were a member and you forgot to pay a membership fee, you need to renew it as soon as possible to be considered and eligible for this um, fellowship. If you're not a member, you need to register for uh, to become an IWA member, then you can apply for it. And this fellowship is for young water professionals that are committed 
to deliver a positive change in the water sector. So you need to show evidence of your commitment during your application. And you also need to demonstrate your leadership capacity that you are able to address these key, uh, key uh, local and global issues in your current work. So you, you need to have this. And we're also looking for young water professionals that have a track record or generating uh, impactful and innovative ideas in the water sector. And as all the discussions that we will have during the fellowship are in English, so this, uh, so you need to have a working knowledge of English. And former <laughs> IWN Grand Falls Youth Action for SG6 Fellows, they are not eligible to apply. So if you are part of the cohort the first time, you cannot apply again. In terms of what is included as part of this fellowship, so it is included um, a gathering, an in-person gathering here in the IWA headquarters in London. And during this gathering, we have some, uh, we can feature some visits to partner organizations, uh, workshops, and a lot of capacity building activities. Then we will have another in-person gathering at Grenfell's uh, headquarters in Denmark. We will include an in-person gathering in, an, uh, in a high-level event in the water sector. This is, should, should be defined. And then your participation in the 2026 uh, World Water Congress in Glasgow is also included. And as part of the fellowships, you develop your project and all the publication costs are included on it. And if you are still not familiar with the kind, the type of publication that you have, I recommend that you check in our website. I can share this, uh, this link later here uh, in the chat. So you can understand how we will compile all these projects and creating an anthology that will showcase this commitment and this topic that we have to choose just for this cohort. In terms of funding, uh, the fellowship will cover air travel, all in economic class, subsistence, breakfast, lunch, and dinner costs for the fellow. This means that we are not covered for your partner, for your husband, for your parents, only for the selected participant. Then accommodation, in single occup occupancy, ground transportation from and to the airport and from the hotel to the venues that we have, travel insurance, visa application fees. So in terms of funding, this is a very good fellowship. We are covering all of your expenses that you have to attend these in-person meetings. And I would like to highlight that in terms of the visa, neither IWA or Grunfels, we are responsible for applying so it's under the responsibility of the selected participant to submit all the documents to their visa uh, place in their country. And if he is not able to get the visa, it's not on our responsibility. We cannot and we don't have the capacity to influence in terms of the decisions related to visa. So if the visa is denied, sadly, there's nothing that we can do on this. Now, uh, in terms related to the application. The application is open from 14th of October to 14th of November 2024, so you still have time to apply. We only accept applications in English, and in order to apply, you need to fill, to fill out an online form and send all the necessary documents to this email that you are seeing on screen. Then you must accept the terms of reference for the selection process, and also it's important to know that all the applications will be reviewed by us here in the IWA Secretary, and we will be the ones performing a preliminary assessment on it. We only be contacting the shortlisted candidates for the interview. Uh, and this panel will include a representative from Grunfels, the IWA Secretariat, and the fellowship committee. In terms of timeline, our interviews will run during the first week of December and the selected candidates will be notified by mid-December 2024. We won't be providing any uh, individual feedback if you are not selected. This can be for the interview or for um, or after the interview. So 
just show where you don't you don't need to send us like a request because we won't be able to provide individual feedback. Now, really, really important, what we are asking related to the documents. We are asking for the CV, your curriculum vitae, maximum two pages, your motivation letter, again, maximum two pages, a letter of reference, ideally from an IWA member, but if you are not familiar or if you're not in touch with an IWA member, you can reach out to your supervisor, to your manager, to your coordinator, and is maximum of one letter, one page. And you don't need to send me an email requesting my, uh, that I write a letter of reference to you because I'm part of the selection process, so I cannot write any letter of reference. And then your project proposal, maximum two pages. So these are the only documents that we are requesting. So CV, motivation letter, letter of reference, and project proposal. Um, in, in terms of what of your motivation letter, what we are expecting in your motivation letter, that you demonstrate your relevant professional experience, especially related to the SG6, that you highlight your motivation for applying and how this fellowship aligns with your career goals, your skills and knowledge that you want, that you hope to gain and areas for development, uh, and then how you plan to contribute to the fellowship goals, especially this local led water management solutions. Um, you can highlight a project that you have led in the past or contributed that aim to improve water management or SGC 6 targets, how you apply the fellowship experience to address water challenges locally and globally, and also an example of your effective team work and an innovative solution that you developed in the water sector. So this is what we are expecting in your motivation letter. Now, regarding your project proposal, as I mentioned in the beginning of our online event, the topic of the fellowship of this second cohort is centered around local-led solutions to promote resilience and adaptation in the water sector. So your project proposal should align how you intend to contribute to this uh, fellowship final publication related to this topic. And then you should describe your topic, objectives, methodology, and expected outcomes. And also should reflect your vision for the contribution you wish to make. Again, documents that we are requesting, CV, motivation letter, letter of reference, and project proposal. All of these documents, they must be compiled and saved in a single PDF file. So you don't need to send us four documents, only one PDF file with all these documents on it. All documents must be submitted in English. So don't submit a document in Spanish, Portuguese, Chinese, any other language, only English. And your, your PDF file should be named as first name, last name, and country of your orange. And here in the chat, uh, in the um, in the slide, you have an example. So Jane Doe uh, UK. If I was applying to this uh, to this fellowship, it would be Isabella Spindola Brazil. This is how we are expecting for you to send these documents. Okay. So we are not requesting your passport copy, ID cards, certificates, proof of address, work contract or any other document as part of your application. So don't send these documents to us. We are, again, we are not requesting your passport, passport copy, ID, certificates, proof of address, work contract, nothing. We are only submitting the four documents that are here. Again, CV, motivation letter, letter of reference, and project proposal. This is the only thing that we are asking. So this one is a big don't, <laughs> don't submit it to us. Now, um, I compiled some of the most common questions that I, that I have been receiving. So before we, I open for the Q&A, I just want to go over this uh, frequent um, questions that I receive, and then I will open for the Q&A. So if you are below 18 years old, you cannot apply. If you are over 35 years old, you cannot apply. If you're not a member of IWA, 
you cannot apply. You need to be an IWA member to participate in the fellowship. Uh, we are not accepting self-written reference letters. This, And if you don't know any IWA member, you can reach out to IWA members via the IWA Connect Plus platform. If you access this platform, you have access to all the members. Again, information about the motivation letter, which I already explained it. If your CV is bigger than two pages, you need to cut it. If you submit it, uh, if you apply with a CV longer than two pages, you won't be considered. So make sure that your CV is a maximum of two pages. This. If you are not fluent in, in English, I'm really, really sorry on this, but the applicants are required to have a working knowledge of English. And regarding your visa, you would the participants that are selected, they are responsible to check the visa requirements of via the country governments. And they are required to ensure that they have all valid travel documents, passport especially. And some of the places they require that your passport has more than six months before to, to expire. So you also need to consider renewing your passport in case this happened. This. And IWA and Grandfels, they are not responsible for checking visa requirements, and we cannot guarantee that any candidate will have your visa application uh, successful on this. And also, will the fellowship cover my work visa in the countries? No, it won't. This is not a work placement, neither with IWA or Grandfels. So don't apply expecting that you're going to be receiving um, uh, a, a letter supporting your work placement. This is not a work placement fellowship. Okay, I know a lot of information, but now I want to hear uh, from all of you. I will stop sharing my screen. Okay, I have um, Oye Lola open. Yes. Yes, correct. Hi, thank you, Sabella. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. So my first question is, is there any font size or line spacing expected for us to put the motivation letter and project proposal? No, we did not request it. This, this is not explicit. As I will be reviewing informally, I will kindly request that you don't put a small size on it because then it's going to be really, really hard to read it. Yeah, okay. And likewise, for the project proposal, do I have to pick like a study area? And if yes, how big should it be? As long as it's related to the fellowship topic, you can choose how you want to work. You can consider um, your your city, the country that you are, your, your neighborhood. You can choose on this. Okay, thank you. Hi, hi, Amin, can you speak? Yes, uh, <laughs> I, I have a question about uh, the visa cost. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if, if uh, an applicant apply for visa and receive the visa, but finally he cannot make that the associated journey, the visa cost will be refunded or won't be refunded? All visa costs will be covered by the fellowship, independently if they are um, successful or not. On this, and depending on on your financial uh, situation, we can uh, book an online meeting and we can pay it in advance. Instead okay. of you paying, we we can pay. But this is uh, case by cases. Uh, the common procedure is that you pay, and then afterwards, um, we will reimburse you. Okay. We don't provide any money in advance. On this so once you have your uh, your expenses you need to have all the receipts from it and then we will reimburse okay thank you very much another question is that uh, i uh about the membership for iwa and today i received mm -hmm. email that complete your membership for connect, uh, connecting to iwa connect plus something like this i don't remember exactly the name so uh, the requirement is only IWA membership, not other types of sub memberships that IWA has. So I am typing here in the chat. 
IWA membership, IWA is a membership-based association, so you need to be an IWA member to do. Um, if you are a young water professional, you don't need to register in a different position. If you are 35 years old, you're going to be automatically considered YWPs. So you need to fill out the information, pay the, uh, the membership fee, and then you have access to applying for this fellowship. You're going to be considered in the selection process, but you also have access to Connect Plus. Connect Plus is our uh, membership base that we use as our database. So you need to fill out the information and, and pay it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Um, I have uh, Moses. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, uh, my question is uh, for the reference. It says mm -hmm. the, uh, the reference should be from an EWA member. And... No, ideally from an IWA member. It can be from your supervisor, your coordinator, your manager. Okay, but for the EWA member, it could be any EWA member. It doesn't have any. to be uh, maybe senior EWA members or... Any, any IWA member. If you want, okay. if you if you have access to an IWA member, if you know an IWA member, and he he or she or they can uh, write this reference reference letter to you, that's fine. Okay, thank you. And also for the motivation, you saw you you show us some slide, but I didn't see the slide because I was. That's totally okay. This information is in the call call okay. for applications. It's the oh. same information that we have there. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Um, then I have, sorry, I will mispronounce your name. Is Sik Siki Hulili? Yes, it's Hulili. Can you hear ah, me? Yes, I can. I'm sorry for <laughs> mispronouncing your name. <laughs> no, it's okay. So I wanted to find out, okay, first let me introduce myself. I am a student, I am going for my PhD next year, but my research focus is in water. So that's where my passion is. So I wanted to find out with the proposal if I can propose um, my PhD idea and if there is like actual funding for the project that we are proposing. No, there is no extra funding for this, um, your project proposal is not going to be funded by the fellowship. Oh, no, I think you have covered my question because I thought it was a project that was going to be funded. No, this is not a, pro this is not a fellowship that is going to cover your project. Um, okay. Okay? Perfect. All right, so, thank you. My pleasure. Now I have Juanita. Hi, Isabella. Nice seeing you. Uh, I wanted to ask a little bit more about the project. Uh, can could you please put the slide again? You have the slide. Yes. Um. Actually, um, what we can do is that I can put in the chat the call for application, so everyone can can check it. Because here we have all the requirements about the application, and for your project proposal, I can. Type here in the chat, I will copy and paste the information. And also for the motivation letter that Moses asked it before. So mm -hmm. project proposal is how you intend to contribute to the fellowship final publication. You should describe your proposal topic, objectives, methodology, and expected outcomes. So it doesn't have to be an on-site project. It could be also, I don't know, an advocacy project, a research yes, project, mm -hmm. any kind of project. Yes, any kind of project. And I do recommend that all of you check what the, the previous cohort had done. So let me share here in the chat so you can explore the information about the fellowship and you can download what the first cohort has done. So you can see that they all had different um, projects that they carried out during the fellowship. And it was all compiled in this publication, which is free to the loan. So you don't need to pay anything to have access to this material. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. So now I have Rafael. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. 
Yeah, good. So um, I am Rafael from Ghana, and um, I actually have access to the previous cohorts projects, and then I read through some of them. But um, my question is, um, uh, the how the project is going to be carried out? Uh, the previous person asked about if it to be on site or any um project that's related to local solution and i want to ask considering some of the projects might require funding and then the timeline how is it going to be done so is it can we just um maybe for an advocacy probably go for an outreach and then come and write the report about it as in an article form or um any other project that might require extra work or field work or, or require funding for it Thank you. No, there is no funding available to carry out your project. So when you are proposing something, please consider this information. Um, if you check the other, as you mentioned, check the other, uh, the previous cohort, they all developed their uh, their projects considering that they didn't have funds to this. And in terms of how we are going to do this, you need to present this in the methodology part. Okay. So uh, I have Christian. Again, I was also asking about the project. Can this project uh, be something that we already started doing, uh, or should it be something brand new? Um, it can be, but remember that this project will be branded as part of the fellowship. So if this is connected to something that you are doing with the university, for example, you might have some conflicts of interest because of the university side. You won't be able to refer this as a project that was carried out by the university. This should be a project as part of the fellowship. So I recommend that you came up with something different okay, to avoid conflicts from your side later. Okay, so I have, hi, Svita. Hi. Uh, so I like again reg regarding the project. So I wanted to check like if the project or the activity that we are planning uh, incurs some cost. Uh, can we find uh, some water related organization or uh, let's say any academic institute like who can uh, fund or sponsor the whatever work we are planning? So will yes, that be you, allowed in that case? Yes, you can. On this, okay. we had cases like this in, in the previous cohort that okay. one of the projects was uh, received some um, funds from external organizations. That's perfectly fine on this. Okay. And in that case, uh, then it will just be like, let's say if I am proposing that project, it would be my responsibility of going about yes. it. I don't need to submit like uh, in the application, then any kind of like letters or that would be needed no. like from support letter. So it no. will be my responsibility to yes. work it out what uh, mm -hmm. I am. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yes. Um, so I have Moses, do you still have another question? Your hands is still up. Okay. <laughs> so any other questions? Yes. Uh, sorry, uh, like you have one. Okay. Um <laughs> uh, uh as a last question, uh, you wrote that there are two two travels in every. Uh is there any estimation that when will be these travels in every? Yes, um, we have four travels included and three of them are already defined. And again, it's in the call for applications. We stated that the visit to IWA and to Grandfels will be in April, 2025. And then we have the, um, the conference in Glasgow in 2026, September, 2026. There is only one uh, travel that is not defined yet, and I will post everything here in the chat so you all have it. But we believe that probably in the beginning of the year, we will have a better understanding where this is going to be. Okay, thank you very much. Pleasure. Uh, Chiara. Hello, hi Isabella and hi everyone. Um, just a clarification, um, to what extent will the fellows will be able to collaborate with each other? Because as far as I understood, these are all individual projects, right? Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering, what are the group dynamics? <laughs> you can explain that. It's very interesting that, that you ask it this. 
uh, the previous cohort, at the same time that they were uh, developing their projects, they were supporting each other projects on this. So they created a lot of synergy to explore. And the previous cohort, we had an extension of the fellowship. This is something important to, to highlight on this. And during the extension of the fellowship, all the cohorts, they were collaborating into only one project on this. Uh, but this was, uh, an, 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 I would say, a very specific. We are not considering an, an extension for this uh, cohort on this because this is a different cohort on, on it and with a different topics and, and activities. But in terms of collaboration, I would say that it's very, very big. They, they always refer to each other as a family. And if you have the chance to, to meet them during the Congress, we, you will see how much they grow together on it. So be prepared to, to collaborate a lot. Yes, you can make a question. <laughs> Uh, yes. So uh, regarding the timeline of the project, so like from the point of view of um, like now I know the time of the entire fellowship, like it's in Glasgow, but uh, like till what time will we be expected to complete like the project part of it? Like uh, uh, that would help in planning, like what to propose. It would be a realistic goal. That's yeah. This is also a really good question. Um. Considering that you have to publish this publication in Glasgow, we you will need at least like four months to, to carry out the review process, the, the proofreading and everything. So consider that your project should be a maximum of uh, 12 months or one year or 14 months on this because otherwise you won't have time to go over this uh, review process and ensure that we, you have the material ready for uh for the publication and once we started with the fellowship all the fellows they will need to submit a gun charge saying where uh, when and where they're carrying out each one of the activities so they're saying that no, this month i'll be doing this this month is for data collection for example so this is going to be more focused for the selected participants and they will have to, to considering the timeline that we have so don't 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 extend your 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 project for more than this period uh and like this what you mentioned like about the, the specifics of when we are planning the data collection and all that so in the project proposal uh we are expected to give these details like the timeline how we are planning that also should be included in the proposal we are asking the methodology part because mm -hmm. in the in the application we are requesting that you say uh, your topics objective methodology and expected outcomes so in the methodology yeah. part if you describe and if you inform these activities better on this but okay. again we will be discussing details with timeline only with the selected participants once oh, we okay. start the, the part, the, the cohort. Got it, got it, yes. Uh, sorry, uh, usually there are, there are two approaches for presenting papers in conferences. Sometimes you present a, a work that already you started and you have some results and then after the conference you publish the work. Sometimes mm -hmm. you publish a work before the conference and then you present the published work in the conference. So uh, in this case, both cases are possible. I mean, this is not uh, the, your project proposal is not an article, and the publication is not focused on a journal. It's it, check what we have done previously, so you see the kind of material. We are not expecting uh, an article on it or a book review because the type of the language that we want with the publication is to make sure that. All the young water professionals, they will be able to understand the publication. So it needs to be something that um, everyone is going to be able to understand, independently if they are an engineer or also a social scientist on this. And in, in terms, what we want is a project proposal, not an article proposal. Thank you. I got it. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Let me see here in the chat if we have something. Okay, Rafael. All right, thank you. Um, I want to ask 
about the visa application process. Um, if you are selected after the interview, can you start the visa application process immediately? Because some countries, it takes a very long time before you can secure your visa. A file only if you are selected as part of the cohort. If you're selected for the interview and you decide to apply for the visa, your expenses won't be covered by the fellowship. So I recommend that only if you are selected, then you start your application process because you need letters from both IWA and Grenfell to support your visa application. And we won't be submitting those letters for the candidates that are not selected. Yes, yes, thank you. I understand. That was um, what I mean. If you are selected for the fellowship, how soon would you start the uh, visa application process? Yeah. Um, in, in January, I would say as soon as possible. You need to check with your country what are the requirements for the travels and then you can request these documents to us in case you need it. We will be providing letters uh, stating that you are part of the fellowship, uh, what kind of um, expenses are covered and what you're expected to do in, in all these in-person meetings. Any other questions? Okay, so here in the chat, I don't see anything. Rafael, do you still have a question? Your hands is still up. Yes, yes, I'm okay. back again. Um, I want to ask if you can request a recommendation letter from a previous fellowship participant who is also an, an IWA member. Yes, you can. If they are IWA members, they can. If they are able to provide a reference letter. Any other questions? All good? Everyone ready to apply? <laughs> okay, so as... Oh, I have a one here. Hi, Andre. Hi, Isabel. I just have uh, one follow-up question. Right. So in the range of 18 to 30 years old, um, we'll have you know, undergraduate students coming out of college, such as myself. I did a bunch who's had plenty of contributions to the sector. So I'm just curious if the selection would likely favor those who had more experiences, or would you guys go for diversity of um, participants in this cohort? I would say that we are looking for good candidates, for excellent candidates. And Andrea, last year we had um, a recent graduate student that was part of the cohort. He was our our baby <laughs> in the cohort. He was also the youngest one. So uh, you don't need to feel shy about applying. Just make sure that your application is really, really strong and you highlight your reputation, both to contribute to the fellowship and also to learn from the other fellows. All right, thank you so much, Isabella. Hoping to be that um, baby for this cohort. <laughs> thank you. Everyone okay? Everyone ready to apply? Oh, we have one here. Michelle? Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I, I don't know if I missed this, but I just want clarity on what exactly should the reference letter highlight? Like, what would you want to know? Let's say if I'm getting one from my manager or my supervisor, what should they highlight? They should highlight that you are the perfect candidate for the fellowship and they, that they can attest your excellence and your contribution to the water sector. Uh, I would say that they need to sell you as the perfect candidate. So they need to provide all the information that they might have to ensure that when we read it, say, yeah, she's a really good candidate. We should put her in the interview. Okay. That I've done or things like that. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Pleasure. Any other questions? I see some name. Oh, I have Rafael. Rafael? Rafael, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. All right, all right then. Yeah, I'm back again. So um, some of us, we, we were part of these young water professionals for quite some time now. And um, I particularly was once an RD for the 2022 World Water Camp for young water professionals in Copenhagen. But uh, unfortunately, it coincided with my... Um, 
undergraduate end of semester examination. So I wasn't able to um, attend that conference, but can I include it in my motivation letter as uh, a feat or as an achievement that I was once a selectee, even though I wasn't able to attend to boost my chances of um, getting selected for the interview? You can say that you were selected, but if you don't attend, how this, how the experience, you didn't have the experience, don't lie and don't include information that are not true in your application because we are going to be checking everything. And Rafael, I'm sorry that you were not able to, to attend the conference in Copenhagen. I hope that you are able to attend future conferences. Yes, yes, I look forward to it. Yeah, thank you. All right. Anyone else? Should I call some names? Just in case someone has a question. Hey, Sabrina, everything okay? Any questions? Um, I'm good, thank you. Um, I'm interested and looking forward to sending in my application. Perfect. And Aline? Hey, I also think that Aline doesn't have questions. <laughs> um, Silvia, any questions? I don't have any questions, Isabella. Thank you so much. This has been very informative. Perfect. So in case you are too shy for making the question, feel free to reach out to me by email. And um, I will be more than glad to reply to you. Um, so thank you, everyone, for joining. This online event was recorded, and it will be made available online. And in case you need it, just let me know and I will be providing some information, more information about the fellowship. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And good luck with your application. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Isabella. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Isabella. Thank you, Isabella. Bye.